Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Grace Gorilla live show. How are you doing, that, Ashley? Doing good. How about you? Feeling good, man. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday to all of you out there watching us live. We always appreciate it when you show up. We're trying to do these every other uh, week for you guys. We may have skipped a week this week, but that's okay. That's okay. We're here. We're ready to go, baby. Uh, thank you all for coming up. We're going to throw the chat up here soon. Um, but until then, let me let me know where you guys are uh, streaming in from. We love seeing all the countries and states and parts of the world. Uh, let us uh, let us know where you're from. And uh, in fact, let me uh, let me put this up here. A little chat overlay. I love this thing. Yeah, that thing's uh, awesome. Chad, how you feeling, man? How's how's this week treating you? It's it's all right. It's okay. It's getting there. It's almost Friday. It's almost here, buddy. It's almost here. I got a Lacroix. Got some water. I got. I had to. I had to calm down on the coffee. You're, you're, you'll see why here in a minute. Chicago, Germany, Sweden. What's up, Mexico City? Hey, peeps, UK, Atlanta. UK. Amazing. We always love uh, seeing where everybody's from. Do us a favor before we get started today. Today, uh, we're going to be answering your questions. Uh, any, any grayscale gorilla questions you have? Um, we're going to be talking about uh, a career in 3D. About you know, doing work that you love, trying to do your best work. Um, and uh, right before we get started, though, do us a favor. Do two things just for me, just for me. Invite somebody that you think might uh, want to be here um, and answer, ask questions, hang out with us today on a Thursday. Number two, hit the like button thing. That helps YouTube wake up and send reminders out to people who might want to see this, sends reminders to people who watched these videos in the past. So. Uh, if you could do that for us, we appreciate it. And thank you for those of you who are commenting, not just on YouTube, but also on Twitch and on Facebook. Walter, I see you on Facebook. I appreciate it. Uh, any any Twitch? We were actually wondering if the Twitch hookup was working. So if, you, if you're on, watching on Twitch, give me a comment. Help us out here. Um, like I said, today we're going to be answering your questions. Uh, any questions you have about Grayscale Gorilla, any questions you have about uh, 3D Career, Cinema 4D, um, you know, drinking coffee. I don't know. We're, we're here to answer questions. Perks. We could talk about perks, Joel. What do you think about perks? Should we? Coffee and questions. Perks, kind of like a coffee thing a little bit, right? Um, for those you, of you... Yeah who have been asking. So first of all, in the comments, let me know if you watched the stream live when Chad first shown his camera script presets. <laughs> Was that like a month ago now, probably, Chad? I mean, dude, if you want to go all the way back, I wrote those two years ago, maybe. And yeah, so yeah, then we showed them and they've been in other, they've kind of like been in my interface for a while and people have been like asking like, Hey, what are those things up there? Those look pretty cool. And then, yeah, we showed them, what was that, like two, three weeks ago, maybe? Yeah, it's on one remember. of the live streams. Maybe, I guess, uh, it'd be three weeks ago, plus two. So five weeks ago, Chad happened to show these off again in the live stream. And, of course, you could all guess what the number one comment was. Thank you, uh, Taylor, Tyler. I missed it. Taylor, thanks for letting me know Twitch is working. I appreciate that. Um, uh Chad used them in one of the live shows. And of course, the number one question was, can I get those scripts? And uh, we we set out to make it easy to deliver not only these scripts, but any of these types of things in the future that, that we create, that Chad creates. We wanted to make it easier to get to you guys. So uh, we solved it. It took us a month, but it is now out. And now it's a lot easier for us to deliver things directly to plus customers so if you're a plus customer you could go get those scripts right now the camera scripts the uh rotate scripts that i think you even talked about in the last live show new stuff is in your library and those came out either today or yesterday so uh if you're a plus member they're in your library go check them out um number one comment was we want those we've we <laughs> we heard you guys Rachel, they are you. now yours. They're now yours. So go grab them. They're in your Plus Hub. Just click download, and then um, maybe later in this stream, I'll show you where uh, where I dock them. And I had a quick, quick question for Chad too, um, but we'll get into Cinema 4D a, a little bit later. But for now, we're going to do some Q and A. So get your questions ready. Um, how do you how do you use the rotation ones? I actually had a question about that, Matthew. So 
Uh, I'm going to ask the guy that made him <laughs> uh, live on the stream. So that'll be my question for you, Chad, a little bit later. You got it. Let's do it. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right. Get your questions ready. Oh, Anders, you got a big old question here. Let me holy, see holy crap. Blur it. Blur license plate. Blood displacement, not blurring parts. If you're blurring license plates, Anders, you should be using not. You should be using uh, editors, After Effects, uh, you know, an editing program. If I'm reading your question right, that's a quick one. Uh, so get your questions ready. Uh, and again, thank you so much for joining us and and um, letting letting everybody know we're we're doing this today. It helps us out and um, helps out the live show. So we appreciate it. Let's. Do it. I'm going to turn off this logo because it's in the way. There we go. Okay. Um, so let's just dive into some questions right away. Um, if, if you could do us a favor too, put a Q in front of the question just so we can differentiate between questions for us. And then if you're discussing stuff um, in the live chat, that would help us out a ton. And uh, let's see here. Um, Joel, I just finished the, uh, I forget, I could click on chats and show them. Hold up, That's the hold best up. part. <laughs> John, uh, Johan, I think I got that right. Johan says, be right back. I got to grab some scripts. We're, <laughs> we're losing our audience here, Chad, by telling them to go get their hey. scripts. That's okay. Go download. <laughs> Going to download now. Look at that. Richard, I appreciate it. Nice. Uh, all right. Let's get some questions. Add the queue there for us. It'd be, uh, help us out. And uh, let's get... Um, Let's get going right now. Corey, I uh, hope I said your name right. Corey Gerard says, I'm following your ACES tutorial and I don't have color management tab in Octane. Any idea why that is? We got a couple comments about this. Chad, do you know why some people have that color management tab and some don't? Yep. Uh, that usually means that you're probably not using a version of Octane that supports uh, color management. So you want to be in like Octane 2020.2 or above. Uh, I don't exactly know what version they added that, but I've been using 2020.2 for a while now and it's it's awesome, man. Like it's it's good. So yeah, you should definitely upgrade and that way you'll get that functionality. Yeah, I, I upgraded as well um, to that version. Uh, I was having some crashing issues uh, over a month ago. Upgraded to that version and um, and just had a, a a fresh cinema install. And I've been pretty stable since. Um, my graphics cards uh, have not been as stable as they should be. I've had some issues, but the actual software and the stability of Octane has been really good in that version. So yeah, um, make sure you're on that version or something newer. Um, and then I... Um, I was obviously using the same version, so I could follow along on that ACES tutorial, which if you haven't checked that out, um, Rachel's in our um, our chat here, and, and she was mentioning she had some links ready for you guys. So uh, uh, keep an eye out for any links from uh, Rachel. Thank you for helping us out here and linking all this stuff. And she may have even put a link into the, uh, the uh, latest blog post that talks about all the new stuff that's in Plus, including those scripts and all that stuff. So you can check it out later. Um, but yeah, if you haven't watched the Aces uh, video, it's here on YouTube. Um, definitely go check it out. It's only five minutes long, and uh, it made my renders look instantly better. Um, I, I, I'm actually going to steal a question. Chad, I had a pretty good LUTs setup in the past with Octane um, mm -hmm. that you kind of helped me set up. It, and I, I had a good-looking LUT. I had some you know decent presets. What's your what's your thought between using that setup versus the Aces setup when it comes to like photorealism? What would you would you in other words would you still choose a LUT setup now that you have Aces in in all set up ready to go? Uh, yeah, sometimes I do, and then sometimes it it. I mean, if we're being like completely honest, sometimes I'm just too lazy to to go through uh, the process of setting up Aces or wanting to sort of set up an output that's ACES ready, like an EXR. I mean, yeah, you can output 8-bit with the ACES uh, kind of baked in. But yeah, and, and I also think that um, if I'm using 
aces, even in Arnold, uh, I'll also sometimes put a lot on top of that, depending on what I'm doing. So I don't think it's an if or situation. Um, I think it's more about like, what are you trying to achieve? If you're just, if you like the aces look and you think that gets you, you know, 90% there, then just do that. And if a lot is easier or maybe gives you a slightly different look, uh, then use that. So I don't think it's a, I don't think it's an if or situation, but I will say, um, if I'm in octane, I'm using aces more than I am LUTs now. But if I'm in, uh, let's say, Redshift, for instance, I'm using almost I'm using LUTs exclusively because you know Aces is a bit of a pain in Redshift. It's not super easy. There are some great videos out there uh, that explain how it works and all that sort of thing. But it's not. It's just kind of a pain. So I usually just use LUTs in there. And then in Arnold, I'm kind of bouncing between both. So yeah, I don't know if that that helps no. you. No, that helps. Good to know. Uh, we got another question here from uh, Chris. Uh, Chris says, I bought a Stray Link before Plus was a thing. Thank you for being a customer, Chris. He says, now that I have Plus and downloaded HDRI Link Plus along with more HDRIs, but the ones I purchased before Plus are only the ones I purchased before Plus are visible. How to fix that? So, Chris, what I would recommend is uh, it sounds like you might still have the, the old HDRI browser installed. And that's all replaced with the new uh, Grayscale Gorilla library. The li oh, excuse me. The library is where all of your HDRIs, uh, materials, um, uh, any surface imperfections, and some other new stuff we're cooking up will all be in your library. So what I would say is, uh, is basically move your old stuff into a old uh, into a different folder so you always have it because you purchased it before Plus. But then come in, remove your HDRI browser plugin. Um, and any old plugins that you've purchased from us and use the hub to re-download all of your um, uh, re-download all of your all of all of the HDRIs. You get them all now. So re-download them into a, a new folder, let the library manage it, and then you'll have instant access to everything, including new stuff coming out soon. I do want to make a second as well as like a public service announcement to any plus members, which is there, you know, there may or may not be a new version of Cinema 4D in the in the somewhat near future. Okay. When those things happen and forever into the future, whenever there's a new version of Cinema 4D, a lot of plus customers are asking, do I need to re-download all of my HDRIs and all of my materials for every new version of Cinema 4D? And the answer is you do not have to do that. Uh, and the developers worked really hard to make sure that it's a seamless experience for you guys to upgrade from whatever version you're on to whatever version you're going to. So as long as you're a Plus member, all you need to do is download the new hub for the, whatever new version of Cinema 40 you're, you're upgrading to, install the hub. You will have to re-download all the plugins because the plugins will be new for that version. But all of your materials, all of your HDRIs, all of your surface imperfections, you could just link to the same folder you download that, downloaded them on on an earlier version, and you're ready to go. So just a little pu public service announcement. We haven't really had Plus in the library up and running through a major Cinema 4D version release. So I wanted to start to get that word out there as, as rumors start going around about new versions of Cinema. So a little public service announcement, the more you know. Do we have that graphic? Let me see. Do -do -do. We do not With have a star. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, so much for the question. I'm going to get down here to some other questions. Um, all right. Ro another quick uh, plus question. Thank you. Darren is asking, uh, trying to understand what it means now to have unlimited render nodes. Is that just for plugins, physical render? What does this mean? So uh, also included in the, in the plus perks that just came out uh, are unlimited render nodes. So yes, this is for team render. This is for um, anywhere where you want to install our uh, plugins to be used um, on on a non uh, what do they call it? It's it's a render node only. So as long as it's a render node only, you can install your Grayscale Gorilla uh, Plus plugins on as many computers as you want, so that you can d do distributive rendering and not have to buy a separate license for every. Uh, render node. 
Um, that's all it means. As soon as you want to use it on two computers, you're going to need two licenses. But as long as you're using a secondary computer only for rendering and it is a rendered only node, you're good. You're unlimited rendered nodes for all plus members. So we're trying to make this easier for those of you who have distributed rendering set up and um, uh, want to use our plugins, obviously, when, the, when you're rendering and not have to buy a separate license just to render. We didn't think that that was fair. We wanted to make sure that it was all set up for you. So Darren, let me know if I answered your question. Uh, appreciate it. Um, can you show where are these scripts? Oh, uh, can I show where are these scripts? Let me see, I gotta make sure. <laughs> gotta make sure. Um, <laughs> okay, let me, uh, let me, let me show you guys in the hub real quick. And then I see we have a, a lot of questions today. I really appreciate it. Um, let me share my screen. Start screen sharing. And uh, bear with me one second. I'm uh, producing and talking at the same time. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> share, share screen, your entire screen. Click. I got to, I guess I got to talk through it. Okay. Tell me if you see a Cinema 4D version. Yeah, Everyone it's Cinema? very small because you've got the chat and then you've got our heads. Okay, does that help? Uh, it's a little bit better. Okay. I don't know if so, it's gonna be pretty small for people. Okay, not a, not a huge deal. I won't spend too much time here, guys. I just wanted to show you the Grayscale Gorilla Hub is where all this stuff is. So if you're a Plus member, or if you haven't been a Plus member and you don't know what we're talking about, we now have a Grayscale Gorilla menu up here. So when you get Plus, all you have to do is install this Grayscale Gorilla Hub, and this does the rest. This installs all of your plugins, all of the Grayscale Gorilla plugins, all of these assets, every material collection, every HDRI collection, and now scripts. So you can see if you're a Plus member, you go into plugins, you scroll down, you're gonna see some new stuff, including rotation tools and lens tools. Okay, so those two things, if I didn't have them installed already, you'll see a little checkbox that says install. You click install right here. Anytime you install a plugin, you'll have to restart Cinema 4D. Uh, but anytime you download any new material collection or surface imperfection, you don't have to restart. You just install them and get using them right down here in the library. And then this is the library I was mentioning before. This is where uh, all of your HDRIs will be when you re-download them using the library. And then you're good. Then you get, get access to all the new stuff as it goes. We introduced Search recently. Uh, I, this is not a uh, plus tutorial. Let me just get straight to the point. This is where you're going to get your scripts. <laughs> it's right here in the hub. Install it, use it, and you can see right here I docked uh, the scripts up top. And if we have time later, I'll ask you, uh, Chad, a, a specific doc question. So did we do it? Okay, I did it. Ooh, now we're top and bottom. How'd we do that? Weird, yeah. I don't know. Okay, there we go. That's better. Uh, thanks for the question. I appreciate it. Uh, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, it looks like we may have dipped out there for a second. Sorry about that, guys. Um, all right. Now, I mean, we get this question all the time. I think we could do a short version of this because I think it'll cover a lot of different questions. We, we get this question all the time. You know, like, where are we and where is Chad with all of these renderers? And, you know, I feel like it's always a, like a monthly update or something to see where this is. But I think in general, I don't want to speak for Chad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you speak, but we 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 use all three of these. We make tools for you guys with all three of these, and make sure that no matter which one of these you use, that our stuff is compatible, right? So that's like a number one for Grayscale Grill, and what we want to make sure is our stuff is is usable and uh, works great in all three of these renderers. Then separately, as Chad chooses what to render, he may have some other thoughts on what he picks to use day to day. Do you have a do you have a current uh you know favorite or thought about this right now, Chad? Yeah, I mean I totally agree. I think um it's really uh it's not I, I think everybody likes to say or and like, oh he's using this uh, or are you using that? And it's for me it's and like I'm I'm not subtracting anything from my toolkit. Like that would just not be a good thing for me to do. I'm using everything to create our assets, to create renders for our, uh, our website, things of that nature. Uh, but yeah, I do have opinions as I'm sure all of you know, like I've got a lot of opinions about rendering for sure. 
And for me right now, uh, I'm using mostly uh, Octane and Arnold, and I'll tell you kind of what how I make that choice. So if I'm doing anything that just needs to look photoreal and beautiful, and I need to do it fast, and maybe I don't need a ton of control, I'm gonna be using Octane. And if I have something that maybe is uh, also needs to look photoreal, but I need that granular control that I just can't get out of Octane, then I'll use Arnold. And uh, I am admittedly in my own work and in some of like the, you know, the marketing stuff, I'm, I'm using Redshift less. And I think the main reason I'm using it less is because I'm getting what I need out of the other two and Redshift has been kind of a slow development lately. Uh, it hasn't really come out with too many features that have pulled me away. Uh, the lack of open color IO support, it still kind of lags behind the others in terms of supporting native Cinema 4D features, which is kind of crazy, but it is what it is. Uh, hopefully they'll fix that. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the, that's where I'm at now. But yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm hopeful that Redshift can can uh, uh, get up there in terms of supporting native features now that, I mean, they've been, how long have they been part of Maxon now? It's gotta be two years? <laughs> At least two years, maybe three, because it was at NAB when they announced it, at a physical NAB. We didn't have one last year. And then it could have been the year before or maybe the year before. So at least two, maybe three years, or at least at least two years, maybe three years. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen better support of the Maxon noises um, by Redshift. And I would like to see support of the background object. I would like to see, you know, like I have a whole list. <laughs> I could just do that in a different show or something. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it it is a bit, it's a bit frustrating, especially when um, Octane actually just like talking about aces earlier, like Octane's aces is just so simple and it just makes sense and it, it just kind of works. Um, and I would say it's probably easier than even Arnold, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. And hopefully yeah, think, we'll get no, there. I'm, I'm sorry I interrupted there, Chad. No. Um, I think in general, you're going to see things move a lot, right? Like sometime there there's a there's kind of a three-way race happening right now and a bunch of other other rent awesome renderers that are moving around and trying to get better and sometimes one of these renders comes out with a new release and we're like man this is this is a huge new thing you know and then we look into it and we start using it and our customers are using it and you know we want to ensure compatibility and all that stuff but i think it's always going to be this little back and forth and somebody will trail off one of these days and maybe there'll be a new third place person but as as far as us as a, as a company, you know, we want to we want to make sure that the major, the, at least the three major ones are supported for you guys. So we're always taking a look at where this is. Um, they all three do their, a great job uh, in their own way. So um, yeah, I I feel like we always answer this question in a similar way. But that's kind of it's always nice to hear where you sit day to day. So let's jump into some more yeah. questions. We got so many today. Let's jump into this one. Uh, this could be a long question, could be a short question. I think we can try to spend a couple minutes on this because I think it's important. Um, Christian is asking, I'm looking at getting my first gig to start working. I want to develop my portfolio. Any advice on that? Um, so it, real quick, I'm actually, I'm, I'm thinking back on some of the talks that I gave about exactly this. So I used to go to a lot of schools uh, and talk about the beginning of your you know, creative career and things that you could do to help build your portfolio, to help network, to help stand out from the thousands, frankly, of other people who are trying to do this. Um, so I'd refer you to that. I think a lot of them are still up on Vimeo. Um, if you search for, I don't know, Nick Campbell uh, speech or something like that, I think a lot of that advice is still good without rehashing it. You know, it's an hour talk that I think still stands up, still has some good advice. But I think up front, the, the thing I'll say up front about any any early on in your in your career is not to get too attached to um, one type of 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 work. Uh, so early in your career is the time to experiment, try different things, try different styles, try to try different renders, download all the demos, try different three D packages, try different uh, completely different uh, techniques and styles. Right, this is the time 
to not get caught up in a three year project making your first, you know, feature length film or whatever. And this is the time to make very small, you know, uh, uh, test pieces to really start to build your style and build how you work, build your workflow. Um, so I would just say in general, th those things not only help you become better, they also hone your style in your portfolio. They also hone your technical skills because you're learning new things. And most importantly, this helps you learn how to learn because you will never stop learning new things. There will always be a new uh, plugin, renderer, uh, 3D package, something to learn about. And early in your career is when to do that. So I know you asked about your portfolio specifically, but all these things uh, are helped by doing a lot of small projects rather than one big project. Chad, do you have anything to add to that? No, I agree. I think that, um, uh, yeah, just try to just like build up it, and really kind of think about what you want to get into and what kind of studios you want to potentially work at. Or if you want to go freelance, like what that's all about, get involved, go to meetups, meet people, see what it's all about and find out what they're looking for. Like we could sit here and tell you like what we think would help in, in a portfolio, but honestly, you should probably get it right from the people that are going to be doing the hiring, find out what kind of work they need, what kind of help they need. Are they taking internships? Do they need any help? And just get involved. Like that's the best thing advice I can give anybody is just to like get involved. And, and I think that's, that's just a, a great first step. Huge. It's, I know it's hard lately with, you know, meetups kind of going away for a while, but when things start opening back up, go out and meet those people. I think that's great advice, Chad. Go to the meetups, go to uh, the NABs and the shows when they start opening up. Go be around the people who do what you want to do for a living, and you're going to meet more people. Uh, you're going to uh, potentially, you know, I've, I have lifetime, lifelong friends I've met at these uh, events that share my values. Oh, hi, Chad. Um, like, th this, is th this is where if you're going to build a career somewhere, you have to plant your flag and show up and say, I'm here because I love it. I'm here because I love this stuff. I think that's a great part of it. Rachel, thank you, by the way, for dropping hot links here in the chat. Um, this is the one for Aces and uh, and anything else that we shout out. Rachel's helping out, so I appreciate you, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Good to see you. Um, all right, uh, we're way behind. We got so many good questions here. Let's do a quick lightning round to catch up. Um, quick uh, question. Is Aces possible in Arnold? Chad, yes, no? Yes. Yes. Go look it up on YouTube. Yep. Good. Go do that. Rick nailed it. That's sometimes you just need it. It's possible. <laughs> Lightning round. It's possible. Lightning round. Love Ready? It. Uh, yeah. Well. Is, is an octane calculating your image on aces and then applying your LUT on it? Mm, I'm not quite mm. sure the question on that one. There's a lot of, there's a lot of mojo magic going on in the octane uh, and the aces Thing, but I'm assuming any LUT you do is just going to be put on top of the ACES process, right? I, I think th I think that's what he meant, actually. Yeah, so if you were to use a LUT in conjunction with ACES in Octane, I think it's going to happen at the end of the chain. Awesome. Uh, all right. We'll do a little more. <laughs> is this live? Somebody just said, is this live? <laughs> yeah, we are live, I promise you. It's it's real. Hold, we're, look, we got to hold up a newspaper, make sure we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right let's see here um uh da, 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 da. have you guys had any experience with the render token i actually heard this at the beginning of uh you were on the uh mograph uh, dot com podcast i think it was one of the first things that we were talking about i'm just looking into this um it, i i actually don't know exactly what it's about but i've i've literally bookmarked this today watching chat on the mograph podcast just so i can uh learn more about it so uh hopefully by next show we could ex uh, extrapolate it more there's so much stuff happening in the crypto space nft space all that stuff that and i personally i'm obsessed with it right now so i will be looking into render and i will be uh i will have an actual opinion chad did you did you dig into it at all I haven't really had time to dig into it. You know, like I just started using Octane again and I know Render's been around for a while. Um, and 
you know, I'm, I'm not going to even pretend to really understand what they're trying to do in that space, but I think it's, it looks, sounds pretty rad. So I'm going to look into it too. Love it. Uh, all right. More lightning questions here just to catch up. Uh, uh, Chuck is saying, just change the folder path for preferences. And, and this was back a few questions ago about updating uh, to a new version of Cinema 4D if you're a Plus member. This is really, other than downloading your plugins, this is all you have to do, and it is in the preferences. So along with that Grayscale Gorilla menu we have now, we also have a tab in the preferences, the actual Cinema 4D preferences. There's a Grayscale Gorilla area that you could put the folder that has all of your uh, Grayscale Gorilla materials, HDRIs, all of your library there, so you don't have to re-download it. And you don't have, and you could share the library between different versions of Cinema 4D if you use currently more than one version of Cinema 4D, like many of us do. We render on one and and you know use the other one. You can uh, share it between uh, two machines as well. Um, all right, thanks for the question. Uh, well, let's see here. Um, gonna keep going here. Da -da -da -da. Thank you. We get a lot of thanks. Appreciate all the thanks, guys. Uh, all right. Keep scrolling. I'm trying to catch up a little bit, guys. Um, so mm -hmm. many questions. Holy There's God. so many good ones. Yeah, if, I see, if you see something, Chad, it's always hard to kind of sync them up sometimes from your end. If you see something, let me know. Um, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> thanks, Adam. I'm a professional. You know, it's, <laughs> what, it's what we do here. Look, it's not hard to it's not hard to sell you on Plus now that it's all in one place. It's just once you see it and use it, um, it's it's pretty great. And now that the monthly pricing's there, it's real easy to just try it for anybody checking it out. Um, uh, da -da -da -da, Octane stability. We talked a little bit about this. Uh, how's Octane stability and flexibility in twenty twenty one? Oct dropped it since version four. Does that ring any bells for you, Chad? Like um uh it, it, new stability with the later with the with the newer versions of octane is, is that oh yeah it's, it, i mean i didn't use it a day to day for god for a long time because it was just so unstable and it would just crash so much and then i don't remember exactly what um led me to want to try 2020 uh yeah 0.2 i don't remember it might have just been that we were updating some assets and I needed the latest version. And then I started playing with it and I was like, wow, this thing, I was actually, you know, testing assets in all three, all three, like Arnold GPU, Redshift and Octane, this new version. And it was crashing less than the other two. Like this was like a prolonged, like 10 day experiment. And I was like, wow, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start using this again, so. That's great. Um, all right. A lot of questions about uh, S24, whatever the, you know, all the Cinema 4D rumors. We can't really talk about that stuff, guys, but seems like we're close. That sounds exciting. Um, uh, I, I, I can say this about compatibility. We we try to we try to be early on with uh, compatibility, especially for Plus users. We know that now that uh, now that Maxon uh, and Cinema 4D are also on a uh, membership subscription type of thing a lot more people are getting it day one than in the past in the past it was a lot more i'll update you know after this project kind of thing we're seeing a lot more people up being up to date rather than when it was only perpetual you know only getting every third version or for, for example so we're really trying to hit as close to uh launch day and be ready for any announcements so that you guys don't are not interrupted on your side. So, um, you know, again, just hit up the blog, and if if we have a new version, uh, or if you hear an announcement for Cinema 4D, it's our goal to be very quickly behind that with a new uh, updated versions for Plus users. Um, so, uh, and also, by the way, for Perpetual users, you will be updated and supported in uh, whatever the next version is. Uh, this this 24 uh, uh, timeline. All right, let's see here, uh, M1. Let's talk about Mac for a second. I get this question, a live show's a good time to talk about it. We won't talk a ton about it. Uh, I know many people have made the PC transition and are just kind of done with the Mac thing. I think the M1 is interesting. Um, I haven't bought any M1 uh, compatible Macs. A lot of um, 
a lot of friends have, a lot of other Grayscale Grill employees have them and, and say great things about them. Uh, they look incredible. Uh, they're not quite up to uh, GPU spec uh, as far as you know running something like Octane or, or Arnold. What I'm really excited though is all these new rumors for what what's the M1 Plus chip? What's the M2 chip or whatever they're gonna call this thing? I think they have the ability to uh, pull, to like cloth a little bit of that market back. Uh, what I'm imagining is there's going to be diehard Mac people that are going to do a lot of work still on their Mac and then rely on maybe a PC to render it, um, especially in a GPU type situation where you could easily tie in other machines. I'm seeing a world where a lot of people, a lot of artists are going to still integrate their Mac uh, and, and that workflow into the world and then rely on some of the less expensive hardware to get the real heavy rendering done. I do think that that is going to be the future. And I think the M1 is going to be a part of that. Everything else is a rumor. Everything else is me just waiting. I think Apple's got an announcement next week. So we'll see what happens. I frankly, if there's a new M1 style, uh, um, what do you call this thing? I iMac, I will be getting it. And I will report back for you guys. I have a feeling I'll still be swiping over to my PC, just like I did on that demo there when I showed you Cinema 4D but at least I'll have a more up-to-date Mac. So I'll, I'll report more. I have nothing else to add for M1 until they launch new stuff. Uh, the Rachel says, the Cinebench on my M1 MacBook beat your iMac. That is true. This iMac or is- MacBook Air. Yeah, this, this is an old iMac. So I'm on a 2014 <laughs> iMac. I almost like spit out my coffee. <laughs> but 15 maybe? I, there's no there's no doubt in my mind that an M1 machine kills this machine. Now, I think if I were to upgrade to the iMac Pro at the time, I'd still probably be able to use it for another couple of years. I am super out of date right now. I literally do zero 3D work on this machine. I literally look through this monitor into my PC using uh, um, Parsec sharing software to use my PC, but in my pretty Mac world. And that's a different video we have on, a, on other channels, but that's kind of where I sit right now. I'm excited for the future of at least my my laptop, but I'll I'll fill you guys in on other stuff. Let's move on. That was not a lightning round question. Mm -mm. Um, bum bum bum. Learning to learn is the best advice I've heard. Thank you. I appreciate that, Chuck. So you, you got to learn how you learn how to learn and learn how you learn. Do you like books? Do you like YouTube videos? Do you like sitting in your room all day? Do you like talking to people? Do you like being on a call asking somebody? Figure out how you learn and you will use that skill, I tell you, for the rest of your life. My dad advice today. Um, <laughs> let's see, quick question about a trial period. Uh, Josh says, is there a trial period for Grayscale Gorilla Plus? I'd love to see what's available before signing up. 100% uh, uh, understand what you're asking, Josh. The best thing you, you could do is we have a 60 day guarantee money back, no questions asked if you buy an annual membership. And we don't have that for monthly memberships for obvious reasons. Um, but if you sign up for an annual membership, um, you have 60 days to try it, download everything, use it, use it in your project professionally. And then at the end of uh, at the end of those 60 days, if you want your or any time within those 60 days, Hit up support, 100 uh, money back guarantee. We will not bug you, make you jump through hoops, nothing. If you decide you like it, you want to keep it, you're good. You you have it for a year, and then you could just renew the next year if you still want to stay a member. That's the best way we well, uh, to, to jump into Plus with like zero risk. 60 days, try all you want, and instant refund anytime you want. So hopefully that helps, Josh. And that's anybody out there that wants to do that. We have a really generous uh, return policy because... We do want you to try it, and we 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 think you're gonna love it. <laughs> Most people do. Um, all right. Hey, Rachel, dug up an awesome uh, link here. Rachel, thank you. Um, this was probably the talk that I was mentioning um, about. Uh, um, oh, I missed my my chat here. Let me make sure Chad's okay. Hi, you back, buddy? I think you so. Swipe the wrong way on your iPad. <laughs> I got a call and it just completely took me down. Well, I, I mean, cat's out of the bag now, Chad. You're, you're, Chad's on an iPad. Let's just <laughs> let's get let's get real here. But the good news <laughs> is my car is ready, so I'm gonna go pick up my car. 
Oh, that's real exciting. I, I love I love it. Um, Rachel, thank you. Uh, this is the link. So um, if you guys, uh, you could scroll up and click this link and bookmark it. I think anybody early in their career could still get a lot of um, uh, use from this talk I gave uh, called The Creative Gap. Thank you, Rachel, for digging that up. All right, let's keep going here. I'm, I'm just now getting to the, is this live? So I got to scroll. <laughs> oh my God, that was like an hour ago. Uh, uh, Jesus is asking, when when Grayscale Gorilla NFTs? Um, so not a lot to report right now, but I, I did, Chad gave me a foundation invite. <laughs> so it's the least I could do. The first thing I have to say is if you haven't checked out Chad's NFTs and his work, go check that out. Um, and then also thank you, Chad, for inviting me to uh, foundation. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly mention why I signed up. So I've been uh, a lurker, I guess. I've, I've talked in some clubhouses and some, um, not my own clubhouses, but other people's NFT clubhouses. They've been nice enough to have me on stage, to talk about NFTs. Um, I've been obsessed with it since October. Uh, essentially, Beeple's first drop brought me into this world in October. Um, and ever since then, uh, I've been a collector. Uh, I've been uh, just loving seeing my friends and people I've met over the years um, not only have a beautiful new world to show off their art, but also uh, make a living off of it. Uh, you know, make money from it. Um, I just, this whole, this whole NFT thing is a breath of fresh air, at least for me. I know it's not everybody's uh, cup of tea right now, but I personally have been really obsessed and I've never really assumed that I'm going to go make art and put it up on anywhere. I, I really do get a kick out of teaching. Uh, I get a kick out of showing how easy all this stuff can be. I get a kick out of building this company and helping you guys uh, with plugins and tools and, you know, working with someone like Chad that makes great stuff. That is really why I got into this is I like the tech of it. And so in the last uh, month or so, though, I've really thought of some ideas that are NFT related that I think could be unique and I think could be really interesting for the space. So ever since then, I, I've decided that I'm going to give it a go. So stay tuned. I, I don't have much to announce other than you could follow me on foundation um, uh, under Nick Vegas and uh, find Chad at CGPOV, right? Yep. At, over at foundation. You can learn more about it there. I'll be talking more about it on Twitter. If you follow me uh, on the Nick Vegas Twitter, I'll be talking more about NFTs and some stuff that I might be releasing soon. So we don't have to I feel like every conversation turns into an NFT conversation, so we won't do that today. But if you are interested in in what I have to say about it, follow me on Twitter and, and chat on Twitter, too. I know you've been talking a little bit more about it. Yeah, I've been deep in the NFT rabbit hole. So it's so fascinating, guys. It's so great. Look, at the bottom, like you could, you could personally not like NFTs and think it's a bubble and think of a million things. That's, that's fine. I'll just say one more thing about it is this is going to change our industry, no matter what. Like our industry is permanently changed because of NFTs. So it's okay if you don't like want to participate in it or think it's, you know, like Beanie Babies, whatever this thing is. Uh, look at it just purely from an industry thing. If you do 3D for a living, this NFT thing will fundamentally change how people get paid, uh, where, how artists are saying yes to clients or no to clients. This is fundamentally changing our, our, uh, our entire um, space right now. So I'll just, I'll, I'll end it with that. Be interested in it if you can, because it's going to be very, very interesting moving forward. Quickly catching up. Let's go, Nick. Stop talking. Come on. Nick, stop talking and start talking. You know what I mean? That's what I always say. <laughs> Scott, thanks for the love. Um, and we got some M1 stats. I appreciate it. No eGPU in the M1. That is weird. I'm hoping they solve some of that. Yeah, uh, that's gotta that's gotta happen. Yeah, um, maybe I will be buying an old Mac. Uh, oh, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Jason. Is there an educational subscription of Plus available for lectures and students? Yeah, I for, I always forget to to mention this, but it's really important. Um, 
there's the 60 day return policy. That's for a commercial license. That's for a real goodness, use it in your work license. If you're in education, you're a student, uh, if you use, uh, if you do online courses, if you're really learning this stuff and you're not going to use it in commercial work, we have an education license that is non-commercial. Um, it's for education only and it's half price. It's real easy. Uh, just type education, maybe uh, uh, Rachel will get you a link um, and it's half off plus. Uh, and that's any year that you are a student and any year you're not going to use it commercially, you can get half off. Just refill out the form. You're good to go. Uh, as soon as you use this stuff or want to do it at, for a living or you get a client, just we'll upgrade you to the new, the latest, uh, the commercial version and you're all set to go. Just hit up support. You're all set. So that's really easy way if you're really just starting or just learning and you want to use the same tools that the pros use. I'm so glad, Jason, you reminded me. That's the way to start. Um, all right. Hey, here's a good one. Here's a good chat question. Uh, um, so I'm going to say Sadat, but I'm, I know I messed that one up. Mm. I apologize. Um, he's asking, she's asking, I'm not sure actually, how to light transparent object like glass. This is really tricky. Um, Chad, do you have any tips that you go to when you're trying to light something clear, something transparent? How do you light something transparent? Uh, yeah, man. So like lighting glass is a lot like lighting metal in, in that you're not really lighting it because it doesn't really have that much of a diffuse property. So you can shine light on glass, glass is transparent. But what you do see, like if you're lighting metal, is you're going to see the reflections. You're going to see the environment that it's sitting in. So lighting glass and lighting metal is very, very similar in that you're molding the object in lighting, not with light shining, but the reflection of those lights, soft boxes, bounce cards, HDRIs, things like that. So yeah, it's just all about trying to light it with reflection rather than necessarily light. Obviously, it'll be light too, but it's more about that reflection than it is the light. Yeah, that's a good tip. It's there's really nothing to light there <laughs> when it's clear. It's all reflections almost. Yep. You know? Nice Same one. with Chrome. Yeah. Yep. And that would, um, I know you made those HDRI, uh, that eight, that metals HDRI pack only for metals to start. But I think those actually, because of what you said, those do work really well with glass because you got all those yeah. little particle reflections and those streaks and all that, all those little gradients. So totally. if, uh, check out those if you have it, if, you, uh, if you're a member, um, those work great on glass and on metal, anything super reflective. Yeah. All right. Can you... Uh, da, 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 da. can you make a tutorial on workflow for aces and octane? <laughs> Man, can we? Magic, poof, boom, done. It is out. Uh, go check our uh, uh, YouTube channel. Chad made a five minute aces video, set you up in octane. And if you want to dig further into aces, we actually have a longer form video on YouTube all about you know why you should care about aces, why why it matters. Uh, and if you're a plus member, there's an even longer version of, you know, diving even deeper into what ACES is all about. So um, if you've been hearing about ACES, if, if, if it's interesting to you, just know that it's a little confusing right now. But once you have it set up uh, in this five minute video Chad made that Rachel just linked to again. Thank you, Rachel. W once you go through some of these technical steps, including like downloading a GitHub repository and all this weird stuff, frankly, once it's set up, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, and I'm in fact, when we shift over, I'm gonna jump over to my uh, PC here in just a minute. I'm gonna show you guys how you, once you set it up, you don't have to worry about it, at least for a year <laughs> until they update it or something happens. Uh, <laughs> we get another, are we live? Do they just ask to see if this is a recording? Like, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like that person is trolling that other person or something. <laughs> and it's like a part of, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a joke now. It's, yeah. a, it's a meme now. <laughs> Chuck, thank you for more nice things uh, uh, to say about Plus. Uh, even just because of the texture and material and, and HDRI manager, he says it's worth it. So I appreciate that. The library is awesome. If you haven't checked it out, uh, our development team did an incredible job making that really easy for you guys to download and get everything. Um, all right. <laughs> it's calling me out. They're like, nobody would have known Chad was on iPad unless I said it. 
<laughs> Dude, you blew up my spot. <laughs> Call him out, man. I mean, you know, he's got the nicer computer than me, so it's tough. It's it's like it's rare when I get to flex my machine a little. Although I don't Dude, think he wants I'm my. In, I'm mine's in the shop, man. Come on. <laughs> I love it. I don't, I don't get to do this often, guys. So I'm really taking advantage. Um, and Sean, thank you, Rachel, for uh, uh, Sean, who also works here at Grayscale Gorilla, has his foundation, does some awesome work. If you haven't checked out Sean's uh, art, please go check it out. He does great stuff. And if you've looked at um, renders on Grayscale Gorilla uh, on a lot of our product pages in the last year, a lot of those are from Sean as well. Awesome artist. And he's uh, he's helping us make our materials look great. And our, our renders look great. Um, let's see here. What else? Chad, we got? Chad on a Mac. I don't buy it. <laughs> Man. I, see, like, what's going on with this year? Like, I'm talking to you guys on an iPad. I'm using Octane again. What's going on with me, dude? <laughs> what's happening? What's happening right now? Are you Benjamin Buttoning? You are looking young. The, the earth is healing. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Uh, so Sean, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. The, the, uh, numbers are, are great today. Thank you guys for joining. If you know anybody out there that uh, wants to join us for the last, uh, you know, maybe half hour of this show, invite them, you know, invite them. Let's, let's go. Uh, and you know, the thumbs ups help the thumbs ups help wake up the YouTube, uh, uh matrix goo robots. And they, they say there's something happening over here. Maybe you should watch it. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just loving these comments. Too much, too much coffee. Tom says, "What about a floor texture for glass? Refraction is a huge part of it, right? For floor, I don't know how much refraction. Like when you change refraction and use it on a floor, that's not going to reflect back on the top surface of the of it as much as as much as refraction is going to be more like if you're looking through glass." Right. That's yeah, I don't know. Like, that's a tough one. I don't know what they if they mean like uh like a glass block floor or it's hard to understand what that really what what they're what they mean for that, like a floor texture. Like I, I can't remember seeing too many glass floors. Um, but I mean the same principles would apply. I mean, whatever's underneath it, obviously you'll see, but I don't know, that's a tough one. I don't I don't really know what that reference is. Yeah, give us a little bit more detail. Uh, maybe Joel, Joel might be trolling us. He says, uh, can Joel. you, can you do a tutorial about choosing lenses? That is out two things you should do if you're interested in lenses, uh, and learning about the, the scripts and all that stuff. One is watch the brand new YouTube video that isn't brand new. Let's talk about classics for a second. We re-released a classic video. And if you've been seeing these classics, you may be, you may have the same questions. Some people on YouTube are having, which is like, have I seen this before? Why is this released today on YouTube when I've seen this video back in the past? Well, what we're doing is we're bringing over our really giant Vimeo collection of classic tutorials from Grayscale Gorilla's past that have never touched YouTube. Um, early on at Grayscale Gorilla, we had our, our Vimeo channel and we didn't really do almost any YouTube. Um, and for a lot of reasons, we've moved away from you, uh, from Vimeo. Uh, and now there's frankly not anywhere to watch some of these classic tutorials. So what we're doing is remastering them, bringing them to you on YouTube. So if you see a video that uh, maybe you've seen before, it should be called a classic. Hopefully we put a nice little graphic at the be beginning of it for you, but that's what's happening. So um, those are the classics. We're trying to put you know roughly one of those out a, a week or so. Um, and if there's a if there's a classic Grayscale Gorilla tutorial from the past that you're like, where is it? Let us know, hit us up on social or in our support. We're actually building a calendar out of this. So just a real quick question about that. And one of the latest ones is about choosing a lens where I talk about how, how to think more like a, a, a DP and think like a cinematographer and choose the right lens. And Chad Scripps helps you do that as well. Uh, Zach, I agree. Rachel's uh, the beast with these links. She is, she is rocking it. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel Thanks, says, Rachel. I have all the info. It's true. <laughs> yeah, ask ask uh, Rachel. She's got almost, I'm going to say, every tutorial we've made right up in her head right now. I yep. know it. She Committed knows it. to memory. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, all right. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, 
Uh, Adele, Adele, Adele says, uh, I want to sign up for Plus. Just wondering if C40 is included uh, or if you have to get it separately. So it's, uh, Grayscale Gorilla Plus does not include Cinema 40. Um, that'll be separate. So go to maxon.com. They have a bunch of packages, including you know adding Redshift and Red Giant stuff and all that. But that's a that's completely separate. For Grayscale Gorilla Plus, it's all of our plugins, all of our materials, all of our everything. Like I don't add pitch you here. Go to Grayscale Gorilla. That'll show you all the stuff that's included. Uh, you know everything we've made over the last twelve years is uh, in your library with Plus. All right. Let's see here. Um, thanks for the question. I'm scrolling down here. Hi from Moscow. It's so amazing to see different countries represented. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Um, see here, Chad, Chad just tricked Nick into using a PC. He did a long time ago. All it took was uh, Chad showing me uh, Redshift on a PC. Um, it was actually, it was at Chris's house. Oh, uh, yeah, that? that's right. Yeah, yeah. It was in Chicago. Chris had the new PC, and both of them were like, Nick, once you see this, get ready. You're going to have to buy a PC. I'm like, I'm not buying it. And then at the end, they're like, I'm like, dang it, I'm buying a PC. <laughs> <laughs> he had that FOMO, man, that that GPU FOMO. It was great. Once uh, once there was like depth of field and subsurface scattering on like, I remember it was like this orange castle thing that you showed me that you guys mm -hmm. built in like five minutes. And I was like, yeah, I'm done. Yep. Yep. I'm done. Uh, oh, all nice. right, let's see here. Um, Nick, <laughs> Nick trick chatted using an iPad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, probably a little bit. Oh, uh, that's funny. Matthew, Matthew asks, is SGSG ever coming back? So I, I considered, um, first of all, uh, go check out Rocket Lasso. He's doing a great job answering Cinema 4D questions directly. Uh, and I was on his show, on Chris's show, maybe a couple weeks ago. So definitely check it out. I, I consider that a kind of spiritual successor of Ask GSG, where you just dive super deep into how Cinema 40 works and how you can pull off some of this stuff. So check that out. I also consider uh, these types of things uh, somewhat of a successor. I, I kind of think this live show is a mixture of our podcast along with a little Ask GSG, a little bit of everything. But this is really where we're trying to answer your Cinema 4D questions, Grayscale Gorilla questions, career questions which um which i love talking about you know the the to me there's the technical side of things that is super important we all need to know but then there's the uh career side of things and the how to make good decisions in 3d and how to learn how to look at a render like a, an artist or look look at a render like a, a photographer kind of things and, I, and that's what, really what i've been enjoying about this live show is uh is answering more of those questions so uh, that's not a perfect answer to your question, but that's I think of this as a somewhat successor of of uh, of just answer, answering questions. I love answering questions. I love talking to you guys, talking to the audience. So, uh, <laughs> Flo, Flo wants me to say the catchphrase, Chad. Save it for the NFT. <laughs> Is that the NFT? It's just me on loop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> I mean, I, if I they want it that bad. I mean, I mean, put it out as an NFT. One of one. It's the last time I said it. I've re recorded. I'll get the hair. I'll get my hair right. Re recorded in HD just for you guys. <laughs> Sean, you cheers, man. Thanks for coming in, man. Uh, how about that classic beer can with drips tutorial? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good question. So there are some videos that are uh, not made for YouTube. We've learned this. YouTube does not love three part, three hour long videos, <laughs> uh, series. Um, so those are actually in many other bigger projects are all in grayscale gorilla plus. So if you're a plus member, you got it. It's in there. Just go search in the training area and that video along with another beer can one that you've done, Chad, you'd actually did a larger version of the beer can, um, uh, sweat and uh background photography and all that in plus remember that one yeah, that that's the, the redshift course i think right that's the and then i think the one that uh aaron's referring to might be that was the one from youtube so, yeah that was one from i didn't arnold i think or something like that but 
Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, you know, like if you, I think I might have a drinking problem or something because I, I I got a <laughs> thing for like beer and drips or something. Cans it's look like, good. I mean, like beer. I, I always a beer modeling a beer bottle was one of the first models I ever did in Cinema 4D, and it was mostly because it just looks so great when you start to add those little sweat details and the backlight and glass has this nice look to it. I think, you know, it's nice. It's like a, it's as, it's as close as you could get to a sphere and drink it. <laughs> right. Like, is that the new beer catchphrase? As close as you could drink a sphere. They make, I, th I was at the liquor store and I saw these like little mixer drinks that came in a sphere. Have you seen these? Oh yeah. They got some dumb name. Um, Oh gosh, somebody in the chat will have seen these. Those are like, uh, oh, somebody in the chat will say it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to drive me crazy. But yeah, I saw those and I was like, oh, I got to send some of those to Nick. I'm in. Look, if I could drink a sphere, I'm ready to go. The closest there is is little apple juice bombs. Mm, they those look kind of like that, but they're like clear. And they, I think they might have a flat top because obviously you got to drink it. <laughs> Somebody's right. saying roundups is what they're called. I don't know. Roundups, that's the drink. Doesn't... Oh, cocktail bombs. That might be what they're called, actually. That could be. Adam has a prediction. Oh. Hey, if that, hap if that happens, Adam, we'll have quite the party at the next NAB. You know, yep. like, you know, there'll be the Grace Co Gorilla Pool Party. You're invited. You've got to buy your own plane ticket. But I'm going to get you in the front door, all right? Look, that's a good, that's a good guess. Aaron, um, Aaron got it. It's buzz balls. Buzz balls, that's what it was. I knew I heard it. Um, and I didn't want to say the name until it was confirmed. <laughs> you know. All right, let's do this. Um, this is about the time when we uh, jump into cinema and answer a few specific cinema questions. Um, Chad's uh, computer's uh, out of service right now. My computer's limping along a little bit right now. I'm on one graphics card, um, so you have to bear with us. We won't do a ton of crazy heavy duty rendering today. But I did want to hop in and um, talk to you guys about setting up these scripts because I had a question for Chad on how he set these up and used them. Um, and so we'll probably do that in just a minute. Before we do that, I lose chat. I lose the ability to even see chat when I do that. So I'm going to try to catch up real quick, make sure we're good. I, we are at the bottom of this of stream. Zima. <laughs> um, <laughs> Zima. Dude, Zima. Dude. Oh, wow. Crystal. What was the crystal? Pepsi what was not wasn't mm. that like a clear when and everything like there's a moment where everything wanted to be clear it was all clear yeah and I, I god why do I remember like a meme or something that was like clear gravy oh like that was somebody... the NSL a, a, SNL did a um uh, a commercial for crystal gravy in the <laughs> 90s <laughs> that's so amazing dude <laughs> as, as as like a Pepsi joke I have one of those cans too I'll, I'll bring it on one of the live streams I think when they canceled Crystal Pepsi, like I actually enjoyed it and drank it. I remember cracking one just a little and just em like emptying it out. And I have like a preserved Crystal Pepsi can in my basement right now. I'll Dude, bring it. you should have left it full and then you could have drank it on the stream. Somebody, somebody did that on YouTube and I'm not about to do that. Dude, I'm that would be amazing. EGPU, cocktail bombs. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I think we're caught up. Um, so... Uh, we're going to um, we're going to switch over real quick, maybe just five or ten minutes in cinema. And Chad, if you see a Cinema 4D question that I can answer in cinema, can you relay them to me? Because I I don't have access to the chat when I'm in my PC zone and I'm screen sharing. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the rest of you, what I'm going to try to do is jump in, and I have this. Well, let me just jump in and I'll talk through it here. Let me are you going to leave screen? the chat? That up then. Like, okay, I see what you're doing. Oh, that's why the screen was so small last time is the chat thing. Yeah. Right? I'm not I won't okay, be able I'll, to I'll, I won't be able to see what people are typing either now because I don't have oh. that admin panel. So we'll just have to fly okay. blind. Yeah, and you can, you're only on one screen, so you can't look at the YouTube. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Chat, talk small, talk small yourself. Get questions ready because I'm gonna swipe back over. And then I'm going to look at questions and then try to answer them. But I'm going to hop in here real quick. And uh, if Chad, if you could, I see you reaching for your phone even. If you could see yeah, a stream can, on, on YouTube, gonna, let me know. Yeah, I'm going to get onto the YouTube to see if I see anything. 
apologies to the Facebook and Twitch uh, folks. I'm only going to be looking at YouTube for the next few minutes. Yeah, uh, bring bring your questions. I'm just going to try to turn off this top little graphics thingy, little Whoa. little behind the scenes here. Trippy. All right, all right, we're in. You're in. You're in Cinema Land. Uh, I'm on my PC now. Here we go. So first of all, for the LUTs, uh, we were talking about LUTs. I have LUTs set up on this scene, and I wanted to quickly talk to you guys about setting up a default start scene. For some of you, you're saying, yeah, no, duh, Nick. And for some of you, um, you're saying, oh, I'd never thought about that before because it took me a long time to set up my own default start scene. Now, uh, for those of you familiar with uh, Cinema 4D new.c4d scenes, it's somewhat similar to that. So new.c4d is anytime you hit, you know, like a brand new scene file like I just did, my LUTs, my LUTs, uh, or my aces went away. This is what it looks like without aces, by the way. Um, <laughs> so anytime you set up a new .c4d file and you put it in, in your Cinema 4D Maxon folder, then any changes you make in that new c 4 d folder will show up here. So like you can see, I have widescreen set up, um, any, any other settings you want to change your render settings, any of that stuff you could have. Um, but as far as I understand, you're, 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 you're limited in some ways to some of the things you could add to your new c 4 d And in other ways, you don't want to go overboard in this scene because it's literally, you know, you just hit a new scene just to model something and now everything's wacky. You don't want that. So instead, I've gotten the habit of just making start files. So I actually go into my folder and I have different start files. I now have a start file called Octane Start R23 Aces Start. That's a little redundant, but this is the start file and it's the version one. I have other start files here. I have a, like a backdrop where there's just a simple backdrop. I have another one that's not Aces, but when I'm just ready to use Aces, I open it up. It says it's already open, but I'll just open it up again fresh. And now all the hard work that I did by uh, uh, following Chad's five minute tutorial, I'm sweating about it. Oh my gosh, so much work. Got it all set up and now I'm ready to go. In fact, when I click render, you're gonna see how different it is with Aces set up. Look at the color, uh, look at you know all the beauty, like this reflection on Aces just looks so much better. <laughs> it's crazy what it does. The important thing to, the, that I'm trying to show you is this whole scene file, the backdrop, the coffee cup, the settings, um, everything is ready to go in this scene file. And I recommend you set up the same. In fact, the square format is, is in here. So that's the first thing I wanna show you guys because I think it's something that gets lost uh, and people don't necessarily talk about, especially in tutorials where they're just like, all right, let's get going. But it's, it's seeing these start files save me a ton of time and they let me get working on my idea rather than working on all my settings up front. You can see in my scene file, I have HDRI link set up. I have a camera set up with an Octane tag. I have, I have you know, a basic background. It's all how I want it. So just a little reminder. Second of all, I wanted to show you guys, I'll try to keep this one short, is the new lens scripts. So Chad showed these off um, uh, a couple streams ago. They're all in plus now. And I knew that you could change your lens easily, but I didn't know about these two buttons. I'll show you in just a second. But the, the key to the lens scripts is he made a bunch of prime number lens scripts, not prime numbers, but prime lenses um, that are basic lenses that most uh, uh, you know cinematographers have in their tool kit. So you're reaching for the same type of lens. So you can see with, with the 17 millimeter lens, we have this real drastic wide angle, uh, not fisheye really, but just it has a lot of perspective and a, it shows a lot of the scene versus this 100 millimeter lens, which zooms us way in, but now gives us a lot more of a st studio look to our objects, give flattens things out a little bit, makes it look a little bit more uh, flattened. And when, when you're using it with faces and, and people, makes people look a little bit nicer as well. So you have all these nice lenses. Then there's these two buttons, which I didn't even know you had these, Chad, until I installed it. They're real simple, but I I find myself needing this all the time, which is toggling these letter boxes. So you can see I have a square render, and it shows up square and octane here. But sometimes you want to turn off these letter boxes, and there's Chad built these scripts that just does it, gets out of the way, it lets you maybe model and use your entire screen while you're using the viewport. But then when you want to frame things up, boom, 
you can just toggle this back and forth without having to dive into the settings. Again, these things aren't saving you um, 50 clicks, but every time you reach inside of something like this and dig and say, where is it? Uh, these scripts kind of help speed that thing up. So I'm, I'm glad I got these installed and ready to rock. Chad, anything else you want to say about these scripts before um, I ask you about the rotation scripts? I mean, the biggest thing about them is that um, the, the reason that I made them even is because of the way Cinema works with uh, field of view. So if you've ever like started a project in like 16 by 9 HD and you set up your shot and it looks all great and then suddenly you're like, oh, you know what? I need to change the aspect ratio to a square. Well, your 50 millimeter lens in HD looks fine, but as soon as you make the aspect ratio square, it's wrong. It changes. It's actually, yeah, it changes it. It's not really a 50 millimeter lens anymore. So these scripts basically are, are kind of like take care of that problem for you. So a 50 millimeter lens in square aspect ratio is gonna be correct the same as it would be in a 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is something that bothered me for so long that I just finally made the scripts. <laughs> I was like, I'm tired of doing this. Get that nifty 50. I love me a 50. When I was walking around with a camera all day in Chicago, I'd have a 50 on it all day. Look at that. I yeah. Like my go-to is 50 and uh, the 100 and yeah, pretty much those two. Beautiful. Uh, okay. So uh, before I cut back and answer some more questions, wrap this thing up, I wanted to ask you about the other scripts because I so only saw you use them once but I wanted to make sure I was setting it up right. And I know many of our uh, kind of viewers are plus members and they have these scripts, so they might have the same question. So uh, if, if you, once you install them, by the way, all the scripts are not in the Grayscale Gorilla tab. All the plugins are, but the scripts are over in extensions, user scripts, and then there's these new rotation tools. So here's the lens tools. I've already pulled these out and docked them up here, but my question for you, Chad, was how do you dock the rotation tools and then I might need a quick little tutorial on just like how you use them day to day. So yeah, first thing is I noticed there's no uh, thumb uh, icons for these. Do you just not use the icons at all? Yeah, I'll, so, I'll show you how um, I like to set them up and we'll just walk through that. So uh, I wouldn't, you know, you can just kill that one. I'll, I'll have you start like fresh. So if you go up to window customization Ooh. and go to customize, yep, right there. And now uh, what I want you to do is say new palette. Oh, just click it. Yep, just click on new palette and then click on where it says edit palettes. Uh, edit palettes, got yep. it. And now just search for, I believe it's gonna be uh, ROT or is it, um, I forget what the what the beginning characters are. Like if you go- of the script. Yeah, yeah, Just you basically just need to find them. GSG rotation tools. Yeah, just do like do, you could even do GSG or something. They'll probably show up, or rotation tools or tools. Weird. Why is that not showing up? Uh, you know what? It's probably, it's probably just like uh, a name thing, but they should Let's be see. in there. So here, here, I think we can get halfway there, Chad, because this is how I usually do it. I just pull it out of um. Yeah, that's thing. fine too. That's fine too. So just grab that and strip it off right there. Cool. Now right click the little dotted part. And yeah, it's kind of tricky. And then where it says uh, show, turn off icons. Got it. And then make it a stack of two. So if you like right click that again, and oh. then you go into rows columns and change that to two. Yeah. And then just kind of widen and make sure it's like set to like, I think small. Uh, not the smallest, but like the size should be like, I believe. Yeah, I think you actually had the size correct. Kind of small. Yeah, okay. Perfect. So now just drag that uh, next to your, uh, just drag it up into your, into your user interface up there at the top. Anywhere you want, really. It doesn't really matter. Zingo. Then just, cha then just change the orientation to, uh, to sideways. Oh, I see. So it goes one more. It's tough to right click on a Wacom, guys. I know, Hold I know on. it is. I also oh, get I kind of I also get kind of annoyed with uh cinema's user interface, like customizing the user interface, because like now you've done that. And if you drag the uh if you try to like make room for it, it like it doesn't actually move. It's like tricky to like 
I don't know. They need to improve that. So if okay, there's well, any Max on people listening, please. I'm, I'm going to keep it here for now. And by the way, every time I do this, I got to remind myself to go make a new um, window layout. So I just say save it startup layout, layout because if you quit cinema or something crashes, you lose all that. So yeah. I'm just going to save that layout. All right. Now I got the rotation tools. I got the lens tools. And so now, if I remember right, you made these for like area lights. So I'm going to dumb dumb down our hdri just leave a little bit there so we could see it but you if i remember right uh talk me through like the basics of of using these scripts here yeah i mean they, they'll work on anything they just rotate stuff in 90 degree increments and for me whenever i'm messing around with area lights each renderer sort of orients the area light differently and none of them seem to do what i want which is to like why can't they just point down so uh, I usually just do that, and I hit the rotation X, uh, and it'll and it should, it's going to rotate at 90 degrees, probably positive. So you can just hold down Shift actually and hold and hit the button, and oh, it'll that go goes negative. backwards. Yeah. There oh, go. I see. So eat. I was uh, that was my confusion. I was I was like, okay, that did that wasn't the right one. I got to go use this one. But you're saying it just keeps going 90 every time you click it. Oh, yeah. that's actually I get it now. Because I was like, okay, there was one of them where I was like, none of these work. But <laughs> it actually, oh, I see, because spinning it Y doesn't do anything because it's 90 yeah, degrees. Yeah. Exactly. And then spinning it X, you could do that up, down, all around. I see. So now that's pretty cool. So now if you move that light off to the to the side of the of the thing. Make a side light kind yeah, of. Yeah, now, now you would want to do that on Z. Uh, or maybe it's Y from where you're it. at. There you go. Oh. You can hold down shift to go back. Yep, there you go. I love it. And then yeah. once you get the muscle memory as to like what's the X, Y, and Z that you're of the scene that you're in, then it just becomes kind of second nature. Dude, this was like one of the first lighting setups. I think I think maybe Chad ever showed me it was just like two, two on like one on each side. And then what was it? X, I think, did it. Bonk, bonk. Yep. yep. And then maybe one across the top. Let's do it. Memories. Memories, Chad. Exactly. All right. Then this and one. You get to, and you're using the rotation scripts, which is, this is exactly how they were supposed to be used. Yeah, this is great. Okay. So now I could do that. Uh, and then, you know, if we want to get, we want to add more detail, you could add the um, area light maps and stuff. We don't have to do that today. But now, check this out. Zoom in. Now I'm just going to power down some of these. Make a little bit on the left, maybe too much on the top. Power it down, and just make the the left one a little brighter. Oh, here we go! Now we got something. Not great. That's a start. Look at that on little lighting rig. Cool. But this is actually this is a good thing for people to kind of see because aces. Um, requires more light because of the response curve, uh, you know, just the, the toe and the shoulder of the ACES CG curve. So you really can put a lot more light into your scene and it will just handle it well. So yeah, I get that a lot. People are like, oh, it looks dark in ACES. Well, just that's because you need to push more light into your scene. It's just, I, I noticed that a lot of my HDRIs, just once I cranked them up closer to two, it just looked better. Yeah. Right? Um, I am gonna set up at least one of these new area light maps because I like them so much. But I'm thinking this one. Uh, oh, I gotta add it to the light first. It's in texture. Yeah. Uh, go flip that down to file. Or oh, wait, no, that light should be fine. You're fine with that. Okay. Roop. All right. There it is. Cute. All right. So now I got a little bit more light going. Get a little bit cooler reflections when we zoom in. Oh, look at all that nice little detail. But boom. Yeah, I noticed the same thing. Actually, I know I set all that up. Let me turn that off real quick and go back to HDRI. If you guys have set up ACES, you may have noticed that power, one power of HDRI doesn't cut it anymore. Um, and a lot of our HDRIs are matched where we try to keep the brightness somewhat equal so that you're not always adjusting brightness when you're demoing HDRIs. But if you just crank it, Closer to two with aces, it looks a little bit more like where it should be. So it's the, something I didn't even understand until 
I was playing around with it, even asking Chad, I was like, is this right too? Um, so that's it. That's all I had to show you guys. Anything else? Um, uh, any, actually, now I understand what all three of these do. What's zero rotation do? Or zero R? Like just zero is a back out to its original, you know, it's like, hit, it's like going into the coordinates and just hitting zero on everything. So whatever the default is, like when it starts kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, it's just zeroing the object out. You could use that same rotation 90 on a figure. If you brought that in, it's going to do the same. The so same it thing. works, works on a Taurus. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is art. Guys, there you there go. There you dude. go. There's the NFT guys. Donuts. Hold on. Hold on. Camo? Camo paint? A camo donut? Psh, done. Print it. Mint it. Let's go. Um, all right. That was it. I'm going to swipe back over. Thank you, Chad. Thanks for the tutorial. Um, and thanks for making those scripts. Those are yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap up here, guys. I'm going to get back to um, just us two here. Appreciate you coming by. Sorry if we missed any questions there. I didn't have access to my chat. Maybe I should solve that. I do I do have an iPad chat. I guess I could set this up, you know. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning here, folks. Let me get our fancy graphics back on and uh, let's wrap this buffy up. Let's uh, bring it home, as they say. I'm going to bring the chat back in. Chat it up. Uh, thank you again, everybody. Thanks for saying hi. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, again, uh, if you want to see more of these live shows, make sure you're a subscriber. The bell thing, make sure that you get notifications when these go live and your thumbs ups and all that stuff helps a ton. Okay, so I'm going to scroll up, make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, thank you guys uh, for the, all the questions. Let's see here. What else we got? Would I require a lot of disk space for Grayscale Gorilla Plus? The short, <laughs> an, the short answer is yeah there's a lot of stuff you get um i don't know the actual number right now but it's in the terabytes <laughs> it's a lot I don't, it, I don't think it, i don't think it's well i don't want to say because i honestly don't know uh, so, but yeah it's a lot yeah so the, the it's actually something we we thought a lot about you know because you're you get a lot uh you sign up for 50 bucks you're getting a lot of stuff um, we decided rather than, uh, at least for now, um, and for the long time in the near future, we're not going to limit downloads and say you can only get, you know, one thing per month or whatever like that. I think at a certain point, we're going to have to figure something out. But for right now, you get everything and everything is a lot. So it's all of our HDRIs. They're all high res. Uh, uh we're work we're actually working on, um, up resing uh one of the the uh, skies pack many of you guys have been asking about that so we're looking into that as well to make that uh easy to download right now it's just too big right now for for uh the hub um but uh yeah you get it all and it's a lot so empty your hard drive and in fact what i would recommend is get a second hard drive get a second hard drive make it your media hard drive and put your media on there Put your maybe your renders on there uh there's a lot of science behind you know not always using the same drive for everything obviously i tend to put my operating system and the things that the computer uses on one drive and then i try to put my work and the actual software that i'm using uh, uh, uh not the actual software i leave all that like the exes on my original drive but the files the, these folders uh renders put that on a separate drive so you got both working at, at, at the same time all right um what else we got here let's wrap this up with a few more questions lightning round uh let's see here import import export settings for octane do you need to find balance samples noise uh curious about a i noise um i have a quick uh let's let's answer this one quick um i set my path tracing uh i set it up octane for path tracing i set it up at a thousand samples by default that's in my start scene that's just so i can let it sit there and churn and get nicer over time if i have the time uh, and then i usually dial that up or down during rendering to get as close to one to two minutes per frame for my renders um, that's not always possible without grain which brings us to your second part of the question which was ai the ai noise algorithm does do a pretty good job for certain types of render 
renders. Uh, so I would just say try it. Um, you do need a certain amount of noise out of it or you get super splotchy AI results. But at a certain point, if you're just getting that last 10% of noise out, it actually, to me, does a pretty good job. Chad, do you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, so if you're doing animation, probably don't use AI denoising. Um, it doesn't really work very good over a temporal kind of time thing. So it's going to be weird and chattery. Um, but for stills, yeah, it can it can actually work pretty well. I use AI denoising in Arnold. I haven't used it in Octane. Uh, and it's totally great for stills and just kind of getting something out quick. Um, but for animation, I kind of recommend either, uh, honestly, I, rec I still recommend Neat Video Denoise. It's a plugin. You can get it for After Effects. You can get it for Fusion and I think Nuke. And it is magic. It's absolute magic. Like you can render out stuff that's like fairly grainy. And this thing just like cleans it up. It's really outstanding. So definitely go check it out. Awesome. Uh, Chuck gives us the, okay, it's not terabytes, guys. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think it's terabytes. Chuck says his GSG assets folder is 33 gigs. So um, it, it's it's a lot. And it's all coming through your internet, folks. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty big. Um, and it keeps getting bigger. And again, this is why I wanted to mention uh, that you don't have to re-download all this stuff every time you get a new version of cinema or any update or any anything like that. Once you download it, uh, it's in that folder and just let the hub manage it and you're good to go. So just a little, it helps, helps you out because you're not re-downloading 33 gigs and it helps us out because we're not paying for another 33 gigs. Help us out, you know, you know what I'm saying? Help us, help us help you. Um, let's see here, last couple questions. We'll, we'll rock it. Adam says the Octane Denoiser is pretty good. I agree about with Chad though, without using it on, um, don't use it on animation. Matthew says it's, it's, it's 80, 82 gigs. So I don't know. We've got a battle going here. <laughs> we may have double downloaded. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay, let's, uh, let's wrap this one up. We talked about everything on my list. Uh, Chad, any, any last minute thoughts? Anything coming up you want to talk about? Um, just, you know, wish me luck on my endeavor. <laughs> What's Chad's I'm... opening the PC. It's every, it's every PC uh, owner's dream really is tinkering and not actually using it for professional work. Isn't that, isn't um, that why we all buy computers? <laughs> we buy computers so that we don't have to use them, right? Like that's, I'm uh, not happy about this. I have to like, I, uh, I'm not happy, but I got to right, do it. I, I got to get back to work. Godspeed, Chad, on your fixing your machine. I'm in the same boat. I have a I have one dead GPU, and we all know that the G, GPU market is not. I mean, it is doing great. They're just impossible to find right now. Thanks, Bitcoin, Bitcoin miners, mm -hmm. um, uh, and other uh, and 3D like going crazy right now. Uh, appreciate it. It's a good place to be. Uh, oh, that includes the dust Olympics. Matthew, thank you. So um, that is a good note to kind of end with. The library in Grayscale Gorilla Plus controls all of your materials, HDRIs, uh, surface, surface imperfections, and some other stuff we're working on soon. Any other downloads, including the dust Olympic files, I'm trying to think of a couple other things, Texture Kit Pro, a couple of things that are not in the actual hub are available for download separately over on uh, Grayscale Gorilla Plus. And so, yeah, some of those things, like those Alembic files are pretty big. Uh, those will add to that as well. Um, yeah. Good, we got we got some, <laughs> hey, a new inbox 1080, 1080 Ti. What do, I, what do I have to trade for that one? Five hole audio. <laughs> I need it, I need a fresh one. Um, that they're up to like 3000 at this point. I'm still on a 1000. That's fine, it's fine. Look, I rendered coffee. I rendered coffee cups. Yeah, guys. I mean your your coffee cups will be fine. Okay. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, please stay tuned. Next uh, two weeks from now, we're going to do another live show. Uh, and as always, uh, we love your questions. Uh, we love helping you guys out. If you have any questions specifically about Plus Grace Gorilla, Gorilla, um, uh, especially as uh, rumors start flying about new versions of Cinema 4D, just hit up our support. Uh, best support in the biz. I love saying that our customer support's amazing. Please
please go hit them up. We'll make sure you're all set up, ready to go. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, uh, uh, Sean, for showing up as well. Anybody else from the Grayscale Gorilla team, we appreciate you. Chad, thank you so much for... Uh... Anytime. <laughs> one last one last little zinger for you. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thank you, appreciate everybody. That. Have a good weekend. Have a good Friday. And uh, as always, in, uh, enjoy this crazy 3D world. It is such a weird crazy world right now we're living in with all this stuff happening be happy uh, and excited that you're a part of this and wherever you are in your career uh we hope you um are enjoying it and having fun with this stuff all right cheers my friends i will see you in another live video real soon bye everybody bye it's just waving